Hey everybody, today I'm gonna to talk about how I like to edit backlit and side lit photos. You know, this time of year, late summer, early fall, we get a lot of those games where the sun is starting to set and the players are lit up from behind or from the side. Uh, sometimes those can be pretty hard to edit and have them come out look pretty decent. I'm gonna show you the techniques that I like to use when it comes to those types of photos. At the same time, I'm gonna show you how to set up some presets and I'm gonna show you how to do a little bit of masking to add a little, a little more punch and a brighten up faces. Let's get to it. So I've got three images right here from a recent football game. It was shot in late afternoon, early evening. The sun was starting to go down. So as I zoom in on this image right here, we've got some darker areas in the shadows. We've got some blown out highlights, which are indicated in red right here that we need to take care of. And there's not a lot of color or depth to the image and we need to fix that right now. Now I have done enough backlit images where I kind of know where I want to go and I've already set up the presets ahead of time to speed up this process. However, I will show you all of these settings and I will write them out in the description below so you can apply them yourself. Later in this video, I'm actually going to show you how to set up your own presets so you can uh, click on it and make changes as you need to. All right, with that said, first thing I would do is I would crop and I'm a crop for impact. This a lot of extraneous information around there that we don't need, doesn't add to the photo. So I'm gonna crop it down, move around here. I'm just gonna leave it the full frame, four by six. All right, there you go. So much cleaner, took out a lot of the extraneous information around him. Next item I wanna do is, as I said before, I already have my own presets and I'm gonna apply one right now. If you look over here, I have one called daylight backlit and you can see as I just hover over that you can see the significant change between the dull gray and with the blown out highlights and my preset. So I'm going to apply that and I'm going to go through each of these settings. Now the first thing we do we come over here to the basic panel now that we've cropped it. Uh, profile is camera standard that is what I want. You know, the, the standard for Lightroom is a, Adobe standard. We're, we're not going to go with our Adobe color. Um, but I like to set it, put it to camera standard. That's the closest emulation of my camera that you can do. As far as white balance, the white balance is pretty good. Sometimes these will be, these backlit things and the shadows will be a little blue. I think he's okay right now. So I'm just gonna leave it a shot for the moment. May come back and change it later on, but we'll see. As far as exposure right now, it's zeroed out. Contrast has been moved down a little bit. Again, this is all my preset, and we're gonna make some modifications to this as we go, as we feel we need. Highlights have been brought down significantly. Now you remember before we started, those highlights were blown out, you know, on this arm and his helmet, but we uh, brought the highlights down and cleaned up those blown out areas. Shadows have been brought up significantly, which are in his face and body and in the background, which is okay for the moment. Whites have been brought down a little bit. That also was affected by the uh, overexposure. Blacks for the moment are zeroed out and we're just gonna leave it like that for now. Now, me personally, I like to throw a little texture and clarity on it. And when I'm doing backlit photos like this, I like to throw some dehaze on it and I'll move it around. And you can see, if I take it down to zero here, it doesn't look as good, there's not much color. So I like to use dehaze as a form of color saturation. So I'll pump that up quite a bit. Although I will tell you, you could kind of overdo this too. So that's about right for now. Uh, throw a little vibrance, a little saturation, but not too crazy. Scrolling down, as you can see on this HSL panel, I have reduced reds a little bit and oranges quite a bit. Uh, the reason I do that is because when I'm pumping up colors and I'm kind of a color guy, tends to uh, affect skin tones, and this brings skin tones back to normal. And this affects all skin tones, not just Caucasians like we have right here. Sharpening right now is at zero, but let's check that out. It is still, it is a pretty sharp image. I don't put this in my preset because I never know how really good or bad it's gonna be, but what I wanna do is sharpen it up a little bit, and a Good little technique here, as far as the masking is, at least on a PC, and you do, I think it's the command on a Mac, is hold down Alt, and then you move the slider to the right, and you wanna mask it down to basically just spe these specific areas right there. Now, I'll show you that again. You don't wanna 
you don't want to sharpen everything. You really are concerned about just the details, usually in the face of the subject. So there you go. We'll sharpen that up. And that does look better, I will say. As far as noise reduction, I can run it through this noise, this denoise function in Lightroom. It's not so bad. It's ISO 320. It's a little grainy. It's not a big deal. And I'm not really seeing much in the way of color. So I'm not going to worry about that right now. There is some noise reduction here, color noise reduction that Lightroom automatically includes. I'm just going to leave that alone. Moving down here, it went for remove chromatic aberration. That's fine. Enable profile corrections with the lens that I used. Uh, and for some reason, I picked the wrong one. Let's go find the right one. Okay, so it was a 70 to 200. Uh, this is actually a Z model. They don't have Z model listed here, but uh, we picked the one that was closest. And then finally, scrolling down here, a little trick I like to use for colors, which doesn't affect skin tones, is go down here to calibration, blue primary, and I like to add some saturation to the blue primary. It kind of pumps up all the colors without affecting skin tone, so I like that. Now let's go back full frame, and let's see how it is. So I think he's a little dark still, and I'd want to bring him up without bringing up the background. So let's talk about how to do that. So if you go in here, you can create a mask and Lightroom will let you actually identify a subject. So we'll let it identify this subject. Let's see if we can't bring him up just a little bit. And I know the highlights are gonna come up, that's okay. Maybe you're about right there. You don't wanna overdo it because it won't look natural obviously, but just bring it up a little bit. And the highlights came up, but that's okay. We're going to fix that right now. Bring those highlights down, hit the whites. And I think we have done a pretty good job of cleaning up this image and making it much more pleasing and much more easier to look at and much more colorful. All right, let's move on to the next one. This one's kind of, this is our subject right here we're going to be concerned about. You can see the red areas where the, uh, the the subjects or the white areas are blown out. Let's first of all crop down as we often do, make him the center of attention, throw a little, little thirds action going on right here, the lines and the cropping here. How does that look? Well, it's a good start, but we do have these areas. So he looks pretty dark and we've got this very bright background, plus the whites are blown out. So I'm gonna hit my preset, daylight backlit, and you see all of a sudden there's a huge difference in color saturation. Uh, the whites have come back down again a little bit. They're not as bad as they were, still pretty bright. As you notice over here, highlights down, shadows up. Uh, we might wanna bring down the shadows. And the problem is with this overall shadows right here, it affects every shadow, which could include the background. So I think in this case, I'm gonna attack the problem by just bringing him up as a subject. And I'm trying, still trying to bring these whites down a little bit. Why don't we say we leave the background okay, leave this person right here, and why don't we just work on him a little bit. So I'm gonna go back to masking, subject. And I know right now it's gonna pick up this other player right here, and it did. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract from some areas, this individual right here. I'm gonna make my brush much larger remove these folks. All right, so now we can work on bringing him up a little bit. We're gonna have a problem with the highlights. So let's work on shadows, bring up the shadows. You know, the problem you're gonna run into, and I'm trying to be gentle here with the shadows is, it often creates kind of like this, this kind of HGR effect where uh, the, the shadows are really brought up and the highlights are brought down and it's kind of a, a an odd look that's not very natural and you don't wanna overdo that. So he's already looking a lot better. Let's go into his face a little bit. He's a little grainy and not as sharp as I'd like, although his face came up pretty well. Why do you say we do some sharpening? Again, holding down Alt, doing some masking. There you go. He is kind of grainy. So while I'm here, I'm gonna hit the denoise function. And the reason he's grainy is because it was quite a large, um, well, A, he's in shadows, and B, I uh, brought it up quite a bit. It was a large zoom. So I'm gonna hit enhance. It's gonna create a DNG using the denoise function. And this takes a couple minutes, or excuse me, a couple seconds. More like 40 or 50 seconds. 
And you can see the indicator up here telling you how long it's gonna take. Okay, now we're actually looking at the other, the new image, which was created out of a DNG, as opposed to the original, which is pretty grainy. And the grain has been reduced significantly in his face and in the background. You know, you don't have to do this function. I'm just showing you how to do it. It's kind of a personal taste thing in my part. And overall, looks pretty darn good. Um, still pretty bright in the whites, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to take them down without it starting to look kind of funky. So now that we've got that, we've got these basic settings over to the right here. What I wanna show you is you can go up here to presets on the left-hand side, click on this little plus sign to the right, it says add new presets, click on that, create preset. And based on whatever your settings are, you can include those in the preset. Uh, let's just leave it all the way it is right now. We call this backlit. We're gonna put it in the group user presets, click create. And it created it in user presets. And what I did was I called it a favorite and put it up here in my favorites so I can find it. All right, so I've shown you some techniques on how to fix backlit or side lit images. And I showed you how to do some presets. Word of caution about the presets, however, is remember, presets are just a starting point. When you apply it to any of your images, it may not have the same results. In fact, if the lighting conditions aren't very similar, it may look not right at all. In fact, if you apply it to a JPEG, it may not look very good at all, and you may not like the results. But at least you know now how to set up your own presets. And while we're at it, I assume you like to shoot field sports, or at least you want to get into that. If so, that's probably why you're here. In that case, I highly recommend this playlist right here, which might help you out with a variety of different sports. Until next time, uh, keep shooting, keep doing your best, keep practicing, and I'll see you in the next video.